shyest, lanky fool of a bushman. When I took the tray, my hands shook so much that I spilled the tea. I think I embarrassed her too. And then she turned as red as I was. Here, Jack, I struck something all right. Here's some tea and scones, mate. Yeah, pretty little girl, isn't she? You know, she has some dresses. Best give and take her, and a pinafore with frills. Perhaps her admirer is going to take her to the church bazaar in so long tonight. She seemed interested in you, Jack. Look here, Jack, what have you been saying to that girl? Oh, not much. There isn't much to say about you. What did you tell her? I want to know. Well, to tell you the truth, well, I'm using questions. Yeah, what did she ask? Well, she asked me. Your name wasn't Joe Wilson. I said it was. She heard you write poetry. Well, I admit it was a trick. Oh, look here, I turned mine to punch your head. Now, she asked if you was wild. I said you was a bit. She asked if you drank, and I said, I'm oh, sorry, but it was true. Well, she asked if you had any friends. I said, no, no, I knew her. No. What next? Good. She did ask if you were doing it. Uh, and I said, no, that you're as tough as fancy wire. She said you were pale and thin. And it was a pity that you didn't have a mother or a sister to look after you. Did you tell her I was in jail? Oh, my God, I forgot about that. I'll tell you what, never mind. I'll tell you you got two years for all stealing. That should make her interested, didn't you? Was that all she said? Oh, let me think. Oh, we chatted about other things. You know, a married man can talk to a girl who the second man can. We talk nonsense about sweethearts. One thing led to another. And she asked him, Mr. Wilson had a sweetheart. And I told her you were a holy terror amongst the girls. You better take that trade back, Joe. Don't worry about it. I didn't see Mary again for a while. I reckon she was a big-hearted, impulsive little thing, as many Aussie girls are, you know. And I was a fool for thinking she might give me a second thought. There were half a dozen better men than me who were really sweet on her, especially young black. He had money, and he had a father with a sheep station. Jack rode back to so long every night, and I stayed at the pub while it rained for three days.
grass with a drover, or went shooting with a jackaroo. I, good God, angry. I was like a bullet with a pleura, or an orphan bandicoot on a burnt bridge. I would go to the pub, fill up with beer, damn the world and even wrote poetry on a piece of paper, believe me. I'd feel that okay pain next morning. Well, one night, the locals planned to hold a dance party for anniversary night. But before that, I found some trouble. Nice voice. Nice voice. I heard a tomcat sing better. Uh, can you stop it, Uncle Tony? Ah, she's tried it on. I've met her sort before. She's setting her cap on that jackaroo. She's run after anything with pants on. <laughs> Steve McDowell is too real good for you. You're a damn core, Tony. Well, sir, what is it? 
You want another job? If you do, you have to speak to Miss Black or Young Robert. They're managing the place now. Now, boss, I, uh, well, the fact is, I, I want little Mary. What do you say, boss? <laughs>